we're going to be taking a look at the guitar tones in the Kublicon video that I just posted a few days ago. Um, the mics that were used for this specific set were the MXL DX2s. And MXL was actually nice enough to send me those mics for free to test out and use at the venue. Um, I didn't really get many chances to use the mics before the venue closed down due to the situation going on in the world right now. Um, but I did get a chance to use them for this show. So any video you've seen from this date, Terror, Kublicon, uh, there's a couple other sets I posted. I just can't think of them right now. Uh, they all use the MXL DX2s on the guitars. So I'm just going to go ahead and play the guitars straight up without any processing on them. Just so you can hear what these mics sound like going straight into the board. <laughs> So when I first heard these mics after they sent them to me, the first thing I thought was, wow, they're very bright, right where they need to be for guitars. And actually MXL uses a dual capsule system inside these mics with a control knob on the front. So you can either use both capsules 50-50 or one or the other, or a nice blend of both, depending on how you want to use them. So for this set, I did just a little bit off 50 50 so i would say it's about 60 40 of one capsule on one side and 60 40 of the other capsule on the other side so you're mostly hearing how the mic sounds with both capsules activated i just wanted to get a little bit of a difference on them because it is just one guitar coming through two different amps and i felt like this is a good way to kind of compare the mics uh two different capsules without any kind of difference in source tone so you can hear that one is a little brighter than the other, but it actually picks up quite an even amount of mid-range, and it's very easy to work with these mics when mixing. So as far as the EQ goes, uh, I'll go ahead and turn the EQ on for this mic while it's playing. <laughs> So this is pretty common for how I mix guitars anyways. Uh, I really like mid-range in my guitar tone. It just really fattens up the mix when I boost this whole area between 1 and 4K. But I do notice with these mics that I do have to pull somewhere between 3 and 5 out, depending on the tone. Um, in this case, I pulled out almost 5K. And it's not a very sharp cut. It's just... A little harsh on the ears and that completely depends on the guitar tone mic placement it's just that for this specific mix it was necessary to pull out that spot so now we'll take a look at the other guitar with and without the eq i did use the same eq component here but it is a completely different eq curve you can see that there's actually a little bit less boosting uh, in the upper mid range here and actually a little bit more additional low end so uh, this cut is closer to, uh, it's still 5k, it's just a little above 5k rather than being a little below 5k. <laughs> so once again, I'm boosting a lot of mid-range here, but... When you listen to just the straight up tones without the EQ, it's you can kind of tell that you can do pretty much whatever you want with them, which is exactly what I want when I'm capturing guitars. So this is a very pleasant surprise for me. I didn't really know what to expect. I've never used a dual capsule mic before on guitars, so I can definitely see myself using these a lot in the studio because you can kind of sit there and mess with the knob all day and try to find the the right settings for what you're trying to capture but obviously i can't do that while i'm sound checking a band live so i uh, just kind of had to hope that what i set them for worked out for me and it did 
But yeah, boosting a lot of mid range pretty common in my mixes. It just sits really well with the way I mix drums and bass to kind of fill that gap because I do cut a lot of mid range in my drums and I do make my bass very full, low end heavy. I do have a little bit of compression on both guitars, which I'm going to go ahead and pan hard left and hard right again. I use the uh, Waves Renaissance compressor. Very easy to use compressor. I've had it ever since I went to school. Uh, they gave it to me when I was there. So I've just kind of always found myself using it because it's easy to use and I just have a lot of experience with it. I'll just bring in both compressors at the same time. So you can kind of, it's not really an audible amount of compression, but it does help keep the uh, volume controlled throughout the set. <laughs> So all that really does is obviously it equals out the volume a little bit more throughout the set, but it does focus the low mid range of the guitars a bit more. I do kind of like once I do a lot of that boosting in the upper mid range, just kind of taming it a little bit with compression. So I'm shaping the tone a little bit more to fit what I want without it, like eating my vocals with how much mid range I'm boosting. Um, once I've sent both those guitars to a guitar bus, there is a little bit more EQ added. This one's more so taking out some of the annoying hissing frequencies that you'll always get in guitar tracks. Just kind of picking and choosing what I don't want in my final mix and even more mid-range boost. Um, anyone who's watched my live streams when I'm mixing sets, I don't really do a ton of scooping of my guitars. It's always just adding more mid-range because I really, when I listen to mixes that I in personally enjoy in metal, there's just a ton of mid-range in the guitar, and it's just so clean, so chunky, and when you have punchy drums and just like a nice tight mid-range on your guitar, I just think it hits perfect. So let's just take a listen to this EQ, which is on both guitars at the same time, and what it's doing. <laughs> So it's a little less harsh on the ears thanks to these cuts here at about 6K and 3.6K. This one's a little wider. Uh, that's because that's where my kick and snare kind of need to live. And then obviously I rolled off anything I didn't want in the very top end. There's always going to be some kind of hiss at the top of a guitar signal unless you're using a mic that rolls off completely at like 8K and above. And it just keeps the mix from being harsh on my ears. I do mix pretty loud in these DT990s, which do have a bit of a colored top end, but overall, it I just don't like that fizzy top end in my guitars. There's obviously time where you need to be a little easier on that because your mix can get kind of dull if you cut too much high end on everything, but it kind of works with this... Um, low chugging guitar style that Kublai Khan uses. Beyond that, I just have a C6 multiband compressor from Waves. Pretty much every plugin I use is Waves. I do want to get some of the fab filter stuff, but since I use an older version of Pro Tools, I can't really get a ton of the newer plugins that are out there right now. Uh, upgrading my OS would lead to me upgrading Pro Tools and vice versa. So right now I'm just using a stable version of Mac and an old version of Pro Tools. So uh, it still gets the job done. I still have plenty of plugins that I enjoy. I just don't feel like upgrading yet. <laughs>
the most significant I think thing that I do with multiband compression is just keeping the low end under control. I kind of use it to even, you know, push further the mid range, but anytime there's a palm muted low note, it's nice to have something on the low end that just kind of keeps it from ducking the entire guitar signal with a heavy compressor. So only the low end is being compressed heavily in this case, and everything else is just kind of being brought up right to where I need it to fit in my mix. Usually I dial this plug in uh, with the bass under it. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and bring in the whole mix piece by piece and listen to how it goes with the guitar. Uh, this limiter on here is just for volume control. It's not really set to anything crazy. So I'll play the guitar, uh, bring in the bass, and then the drums. So when I'm mixing the guitar, it obviously sounds like I'm dulling it up. Uh, I'm taking a lot of the top end out, but it just sounds really obvious when you listen to it AB, then AB, every plug-in, one by one. But when you listen to it in the context of the entire mix, it kind of makes a bit more sense. It doesn't sound so dull, at least in my opinion. Um, I might be wrong. I'm just some dude on the internet. So... Thank you, MXL, for sending me these mics. I think that this mix came out really good because of them. Um, overall, I just really enjoyed doing this mix. I enjoy doing all these videos for you guys to enjoy. I'm sorry that there's not many left for me to post, but um, we'll talk about that a bit more in a future video. I do have a couple more videos coming that I just kind of had sitting uh, on the back burner. Thanks for watching. Thank you, MXL. Uh, thank you, everyone who watches my mix streams on Twitch. Thank you, everyone who shares my live sets on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to do my best to give you guys more stuff to enjoy. But, yeah, for now, that's it for me. And I hope you have a good rest of your day.